electrons? Moons speeding around a giant planet made of gas? Planets orbiting a distant star? Satellites? This light is an idea. An idea that promises new understanding simply by delivering fresh perspectives and new perceptions. What do we know? What do we really know? What do we know to be true? perceive light, we see it, but what we see and what it means are not the same. Without context, detail means nothing. Oh, there are so many factors at play here. What wavelengths of light can we see? How well can our brains take what we see and turn it into something we understand? And also, how do we compare ourselves to the thing we're observing? What tools do we use to help us capture information? How do we turn light into data, data into pixels, pixels into meaning? Start with a planet. Europa. Jupiter. Enceladus. As long as we're at it, let's tip the Earth to spin properly on its axis. Now, recall our original points of light, our idea. These are satellites in orbit. Satellites collect data as the Earth rotates beneath them. Think of satellites as paintbrushes working in reverse. Instead of painting planets with light, satellites collect light reflected from planets below. With enough data, we can paint a world. Data that make this image come from instruments on two NASA satellites called Aqua and Terra. These instruments see the Earth in what we might regard as natural color. They can also see certain events as they happen. There, splattered like white paint on a blue canvas, something important, Hurricane Katrina. These satellites are only two of many that can see hurricanes. But to look inside, we need something specially built for the job. Here we go. The stripes you see building up come from a unique spacecraft called TRIM. Among the many remarkable things TRIM can do, it can look inside hurricanes like nothing else in the world. See for yourself. Trim sees the actual body of the beast in three dimensions. Orange and red zones indicate higher rainfall rates. Cloud spires, called hot towers, drive the storm's greedy grab for energy. Removing the clouds, a separate instrument on the Aqua satellite measures ocean temperature. Temperatures matter. 
Warm water is the gasoline that powers hurricane engines. This thermal footprint shows fuel in the tank, vital information for forecasters and scientists. The Earth changes. It breathes. And it surprises. Though we live on a planet largely covered by water, we often forget that huge tracks are frozen solid. Let's change the perspective. Ice covers much of the world. The eternally frozen parts are called the cryosphere. It's the planet's thermostat and a hydrological warehouse. And in terms of a changing climate, it's the canary in a coal mine. You may live your whole life and never visit these places, but these places will affect your life nonetheless. You know this place. We haven't been here in a while, but that's about to change. Earth's closest neighbor is little more than a beautiful stranger across an airless room. There are mysteries here, and answers, and, like love perhaps, destiny. These are the six lunar neighborhoods astronauts visited decades ago. Bags. We're going back soon. Back on Earth, day and night change like moons, with points of light pricking the darkness like vaguely remembered dreams. City lights shine into space at night, like ancient campfires like candles of civilization. No other place beyond the Earth shows signs of life like this, or shows signs of life at all. But we're looking. Before we can find life elsewhere, we need to be good at reading its signs at home first. And on Earth, life is everywhere. This is the living Earth, the biosphere. Phytoplankton bloom in vast oceanic fields. Land plants pulse rhythmically with seasonal growth. Together, these sound the global heartbeat, the pulse of life powered by the sun. energy on Earth comes from the sun. The car you rode in this morning, the unabashed tomatoes and perfumed basil you coax from your garden each summer, the two bars out of five on your cell phone, they're all quantities of energy. And that means they're all connected to the sun. If you live on Earth, this is the nightlight that matters most. The moon, the earth, the sun. Celestial spheres we see and feel every day. But in our solar neighborhood, there are other places too. 
fabulous places, mysterious places. As a tourist destination, Mars has an impressive brochure. The longest, deepest canyon in the solar system. A crater so vast that its edge stretches over the horizon. A volcano so high, its peak climbs above most of the Martian atmosphere. Nothing like these places exists on Earth. Nothing. This is Mars seen differently. You're looking at an elevation map made with an orbiting laser. Red and white areas reach high above the average. Blues and purples show lowlands. If Mars were covered in oceans, the northern hemisphere would be underwater. Imagine the first human footprints left on the shore. What is the world we create in our minds? We create depending on what we want to see. At first, it was enough just to walk, to run, to get wet in the rain, to simply touch the forces of nature. But once in motion, imagination. Then space, perspective. We see what we set out to find. We see what we choose to see. There are often surprises. This is from a NASA mission called WMAP. If the whole universe were a person, this would be its first baby picture. There are no stars here, no galaxies, certainly no planets, but there is energy. The rest came soon enough, once the new kid could collect herself. This is the universe we see today. It's a lively place. That's a gamma ray burst spotted by NASA's SWIFT satellite. These cosmic blasts have long puzzled scientists. They may be stars collapsing in upon themselves or two densely packed remnants of stars merging together. But in either case, scientists believe they herald the births of black holes. They're the most powerful explosions in the universe after the Big Bang, and they seem to happen all the time, as often as once a day. Satellites like WMAP and SWIFT are rapidly coloring our perceptions about our place in the universe. What we know is a function of what we think to ask what we challenge ourselves to see. We look outwards as much as we look inwards. For if there is any certainty in the journey of knowledge, it's that travel in any direction can lead to the same destination. We see only what we look for. And in space and on Earth, we seek the wisdom to ask the right 